here with Mark Lahan, who's going to show us um, another yin yoga posture um, known as pigeon pose or swan pose. Yeah, pigeon pose is a very popular pose. People love it and hate it at the same time because it does bring up a lot of stuff and people brings up a lot of sensation. But you know, at the end of the day, once they let go of those tensions, those tensions which are really draining them of their energy every day, you know, they get they recognize the benefits. So the good thing is about you know these poses. It doesn't have to be that intense. So we'll show you how to use props to to make it a little little easier on you. Uh, so that you aren't so comfortable that you're too relaxed, but you are approaching some of the tensions. The one key thing to watch out for, there's a lot of discussion in yoga about uh, the safety of the knee in pigeon. And there, it is something to uh, keep in mind, because it's not a knee opening pose, it's a hip opening pose. So you should not be feeling it in your knee joints. So you want to pay close attention, especially to the inside and outside edges of the knee. And if you're feeling it there, now if it's a, just a light, light, light dullness, that's one thing. But if you're feeling some real sensation there, we need to modify or, or change the pose or give you a different option so that you're safer. So uh, she's going to start off in downward dog. And we're going to start with our right knee first. So the right knee is going to come to the outside of the right wrist. Right, and then if you look at how her shin is at a diagonal line, and as she settles into the pose, ideally you start off with the hips kind of more square to the front, and she just walks that knee back a little bit, never again feeling it in the knee joint in the front. And option one, she can stay up taller and let the weight of her body, upper body, kind of sink down into the hips, which can be a great option, or bringing some length into the spine and then exhale, starting to fold forward, maybe resting on the elbows or down palms underneath the forehead, whichever one makes sense for you, as long as you can try to keep the shoulders relaxed. Sometimes taking the elbows out a little bit wider helps the shoulders drop. So she's very passively resting in this pose, not pushing, not pulling, not too much effort. And the idea here is that you know you can spend anywhere from two to five minutes. If you've been doing yoga for a while and you're very comfortable with your body and you know it well, then you can go into the eight or ten minute uh, you know, pose and, and have a lot of fun. You know, after eight minutes, you just don't want to come out of this pose. So this is, uh, you know, option one for the people who are a little more flexible. Uh, she's very flexible on her hips, so she can actually come up a little bit back onto the palms and take that foot, the front foot forward a little bit more. And usually that makes it a little more intense for some people, or at least changes the angle in which she's feeling it. And then she could come back down or, or she could stay up, it's up to her. Now to come out of the pose, we're going to come out and show you the other side of it so you can see it from the other side. She comes back up on her palms and bring the back knee to the front a couple of inches first, then curl the toes under, lift right back up to down dog. I usually moan a little bit when I've been holding it for a while to come out. You know, you can stay in a neutral position and down dog or even rest on your belly for a little while between the poses because you're holding them for so long. Or you can go right in, so left knee to the outside of the left wrist. And, and, you know, for, see again, see how flex flexible she is, she comes very low to the ground. Now, if you were a little less flexible and needed some support, you can place a block. So let's have you lift up a little higher. Yeah, place a block underneath the hip or a bolster or a, a cushion, something that can support you so that it's not so intense that you have to come out right away. Because, again, it's duration, not intensity, that makes a difference in this pose. Now again, she doesn't need the prop, so I'm going to slide it right out underneath and have her sink as far down as she can. You know, I, I also usually recommend people use a timer when they're doing it at home so that they're not like kind of guessing and using, you know, looking at the clock every time so that they can really get into the sensation. And the key is to just breathe and relax. Focus on where you're feeling it most. Where is your body resisting this the most? And just you know, inhale, draw the breath into the spot, exhale, release, exhale, relax. So feel and send the instruction to that part of your body to relax and to open up. And again, to come back out of the pose, hands come in, front, the knee goes to the front a little bit, curl the toes, lift right up, take a, a, a moan, take some movement, and then either rest or move on to the next pose. So it's a great pose to release some of the stuff that's coming out of our hips. Remember that the more, the more you keep these tensions in your body, the more they're going to drain you. So do yourself a favor and, and just let go of it, and you'll feel a whole lot better.
Thank you very much. My pleasure. If you need some more poses or some more resources on yoga and general health and well-being, check out my website, marklaham.com, and feel free to drop me a line if you have any questions. Thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can also visit my website, LexiYoga.com, for more information on the healing powers of yoga and much more.